Mavic Air 2 and HDR video. Let's explain what it is and how you can use it. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On and it's a beautiful sunny day today and I've got with me the Mavic Air 2 and today we're going to be looking at HDR video. Not many people know what it is, but put simply, it's all about contrast or dynamic range, hence HDR, high dynamic range. HDR is the difference between the darkest parts and the lightest parts of an image. Dynamic range is measured in stops, so for every one stop, you essentially double the amount of light. The human eye can see about the equivalent of 20 stops, well, unless you've drank a bit of beer. The benefit of HDR video is that it overcomes the limitations of the old style video and HDR provides you around 13 stops as a minimum and that means you see the lightest and the darkest parts of an image in conditions when you generally wouldn't end up seeing one or the other. Basically HDR video means you no longer need to compromise and so we're going to get the Mavic Air 2 in the sky, show you how to use it and show you the results you can get. If you appreciate this content, click that subscribe button, comment below at any point whilst you're watching as well, and all comments will be responded to. Now in a recent video, somebody asked me, before you fly your drone, should you always unfold the props like that? My advice is absolutely yes, because otherwise the props are spinning completely unbalanced on the motor. And just long term, it's not going to help the motor when the motor's having to spin sufficiently to unfold the props. It sounds really petty, but it's all about care of the drone and longevity of it. I always unfold the props and then I just pull the ends of each to straighten them out before I fly. It just means less load and less burden on my little motors. And yes, I also like to keep the stickers on. Sorry, Ken Heron. The drone's got no filters on it and the camera settings are all on auto because I want to reflect a beginner experience here. If you don't know how to use ND filters, don't use them. If you don't know how to configure the camera, just stick it on auto. It's all about learning in baby steps. So I want to start and show you what's possible. First of all, we'll have a quick look at the app. So if we go into our camera settings by pressing the little button on there that says smart right now, you'll see under video, we then have HDR. And under HDR, you've got 4K, 2.7K, and 1080p. So depending on what you're gonna be doing with the video, you can choose the output resolution. Then under those as well, we have frame rates. Now I tend to shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second because I'll be shooting this video here at 30 frames a second. When you're mixing video from different sources, it's always a good idea to make sure you're shooting at the same frame rate or at least a frame rate that you can double or half and you end up with an equal division. If you mix frame rates, you can end up with stuttering because your video editing software is having to compensate by filling in the missing frames. So if you render your footage and you find that it's jerky, that could be why. So we're gonna set ours to HDR 4K 30 frames a second and let's take off. So isn't that looking pretty? Now, you might be wondering, well, it just looks like regular drone video. What's so special about HDR? And that's really when you see the difference when you switch. So at the moment, the current scene is HDR enabled. So what I'm gonna do now is change the settings to regular video and show you a split screen. And now put the two side by side and hopefully you can see the difference in how the video looks. You'll notice in the HDR video that there is much more contrast, much more brightness in the bright areas, the sky, the clouds, everything in the sky generally comes out beautifully with HDR video rather than just looking blue or white. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly out towards the water over there, still on regular video mode at the moment. And let's head over to that beautiful looking lake. Isn't that pretty? And okay, so now we've got this nice scene here. So actually we'd, we've got quite a nice bit of detail here anyway. And you'll notice now in the HDR video, again, the contrast is so much better. Things look so much more vibrant and alive and you just end up with such a better effect. What you tend to find is non-HDR video looks so much more flatter. So just as another example now, if you take this scene here, you can see that with a regular video, you don't really get a lot of detail in the ground or in the sky. However, if we now flick to HDR video, the difference is quite significant. 
You can now see plenty of detail on the ground and also you've got a little bit more detail of the clouds which you wouldn't have with regular video. HDR does really bring out the dark and the light areas and give you far more detail. So what we'll do now is use one of the point of interest modes to rotate around an object in HDR versus non-HDR. This will be a really nice test. So there's a beautiful old church here. What we're going to do is draw a box around it to mark it as our center. And then we're going to go on rotational mode. Now at the moment we're in HDR video. And so we're going to do a fast rotation around that. There we go. And now it's rotating. So first of all, we'll start with regular video mode. I'm going to set record there so that we can see what that looks like. And it does look really pretty. The colors are still very good, but the image does tend to look a little bit flat perhaps, and it could do with a bit more detail. Also, of course, we want to have a bit more contrast around, the, around those trees. So if we now flick to HDR mode and start recording, there you go. Now you can see immediately the image just pops before any post editing at all. The image just has much better contrast, brightness, the colors are more vibrant, there's more saturation there. Now, some of these effects you can achieve in post. You can clearly make an image pop through some post editing, but you can't pull out detail that isn't there in the original shot. And that's the good thing about HDR. It does expose the additional detail that would otherwise be lost in a fairly flat image. So that's a little preview of HDR. I'm going to turn that mode off now and I'm going to bring it back. But ultimately, you know, HDR is, is going to be down to your use case of how you want to use your drones. You don't have to use HDR, but it, the feature is there and it will work better in some conditions than others. It's not always going to be a mode that makes your image look fantastic without you making any effort or work. So you do still need to work at it to bring perfect drone footage uh, out of a drone like this. So hopefully that's been useful as a look at HDR video and how it might be able to help you. It's never going to produce a perfect shot. You still need the ideal weather and conditions. And today, unfortunately, it's so sunny and bright that everything is already perfectly illuminated by the sun up there but experiment and give it a try. In the meantime, comment below, give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe.